Okay, today we'll take a quick look at uh, pitching. <clears throat> now, pitching is a very complex skill. Uh, once you know it, it's a lot simpler, but initially, it's very complex, goes through many parts, they go in sequence. We want to take a look at how you can pitch 100 miles an hour. And it's very possible. 100 miles an hour is not out of the ordinary. The reason many pitchers are not pitching that fast, or throwing the ball that hard or fast, is that they don't have very good technique. Many people call that mechanics, but mechanics is more the uh, how much, how fast, and, uh, and whatnot. It's more details of what takes place in technique. So it's really the technique that plays the role. But with good technique, we get a progression of body parts from the feet to the hips, or we can say the legs in between, the hips, then the midsection, shoulders, uh, shoulders with a couple of different movements, the arm or shoulder joint, upper arm, as well as then the elbow, then the uh, wrist joint, and the fingers. So you can see we have quite a few joints involved. And to address all of them at one time, it can be done, but it's going to be very complex. So rather than trying to do everything in one shot, we're going to do it piecemeal. So today we'll take a look at the stride, which starts the pitch, and what the feet do, how you land, and what forces are developed and why it's so important to have a good stride. Now we're going to take a look at Lincecum, Tim Lincecum, and the reason I chose him is because he has a very powerful and long stride. Most pitchers don't have this long or powerful a stride, which still makes them good. So there are two things to consider here. When you have a very long stride, you can't do much with the hips. If you have a shorter stride, you can do more with the hips in terms of their rotation. So again, see, we see the, the technique interplaying with the, uh, the pitcher's physical abilities. And then you can't say one is better than the other. It depends upon your physical capabilities and what your technique is or what technique you want to develop. Okay, so when we see him start off, uh, Leg coming down. See, the one thing I don't like about what he does, see this straight leg and bringing it around this way, straight leg and bringing it around. It's a lot of wasted motion. It's not doing anything, not contributing any force. So if he kept his knee bent a little bit and drove it straight forward, he could have a more forceful and even faster delivery. Okay, but let's take a look at that rear leg because that's the one that's really going to be responsible for pushing him forward. That's really where the stride is. It's in the rear leg. See his leg still coming around, still coming around. But see how the rear leg is straightening out. And the hips are still square or sideways to the batter. So there's no hip rotation yet. It's coming around. See, that leg is straightening, straightening. And look at the way he pushed his hips. Look at the hips are now. Hips started over here. And the hips have already moved all of this distance. See, that's where he's getting that power from. And it's still continuing. It's not over. It's not done yet. His foot hasn't touched the ground. So we have the full extension. He's still reaching. Still coming in. Still hasn't hit. Notice how his hips, uh, our shoulders are still rotated to the rear. His hips are still in that side facing position. And his foot is still well off the ground. Still coming in, still coming in. His momentum is carrying him forward a little bit. If you notice, his rear leg is starting to drag a little bit off the rubber. But see, he's starting to, a little bit of that hip rotation shoulder rotation rather, a little bit with the hips, they kind of going together, but he still hasn't touched down on the ground. So this does not contribute to more force. If his foot was already on the ground and he starts the upper body rotation, he's going to have more force. But he's starting it a little bit too soon. And that could be due to too long a stride. If he started, you know, if his foot made the contact now, he'd be in good shape. but still hasn't hit, still has a ways to go. See, he's already getting ready for that cocking action as the shoulders are coming around. Finally, the foot is making initial contact. 
and look where the foot from that was on the rubber is. See, so you can see how that forward momentum is still carrying him. So he finally lands, foot is off the rubber, but he's already well into uh, his throw, into the power phase. So he's already starting to generate that force. On the landing, notice how he's landing on the heel first. And this is how the landing should be done. I see many people talk about landing uh, on the ball of the foot first. If you do this, it'll jam you and stop all other movement. You want to land on the heel to allow the body forces to move on over the foot. So he's landing over here. Let's take a look at what happens. Come on, come down. Okay, foot's coming down. Coming down. So by the time the foot is in full contact with the ground, he's halfway into his cocking phase. See, so that's really a little bit too premature. But he can still develop because he's doing all of this. The stride has actually made up for some of the force he may be losing on that shoulder rotation. But still, he, he still makes it quite effective. Okay, we can talk more about the separation between the hips and shoulders and so on, but I'm gonna reserve that for another day. Right now, we just wanted to focus on the stride. And we can see how he executes a good stride. One thing I should also bring out, as the muscles on this side of the hip, the hip abductors, that are responsible for pushing the hips forward. The foot comes in later on, or the leg comes in later on, but the initial is with the hip abductors. They push the hips forward, and then the leg takes over to push you the rest of the way. But the hips have to be in motion first. Okay, we'll leave it there, and. We'll pick up with another body part in pretty soon.